When Apple CEO Steve Jobs recently returned to work after receiving a liver transplant, he praised the generosity of organ donors. However, many economists argue that the appeal to individual generosity is not enough to meet the high demand for healthy organs, and that we should instead be creating financial incentives to encourage donation. To discuss these issues, we sat down with Kieran Healy, professor of sociology at Duke University and the Keenan Institute for Ethics, and the author of Last Best Gifts, Altruism and the Market for Human Blood and Organs. So the debate about the ethics and economics of organ transplantation and donation uh, is carried on in a fairly straightforward way at the level of individuals. We ask either how can we find people who are willing to give, special people, altruists who have this disposition to give, or how can we appeal to people's self-interest by offering them money in some way to participate in the system. The problem with that way of framing the debate is that it treats those choices as, as if they take place in a vacuum. And it turns out that the best predictor of whether you're likely to donate or whether you're likely to give, not just an organ but almost anything, is not something about your character or your personality, but simply whether you're asked to give, whether you're asked by somebody to participate. It might be true that the simple fact of asking donors to give carries a lot of weight, but this sociological finding faces unique challenges when it comes to organ donation. So it's easy to say in the abstract that asking people to volunteer or contribute is what really matters and what really makes a difference. But when it comes to something like organ transplantation, how do you ask people to make that kind of sacrifice? Now, if you go back to the early days of organ transplants in the 1970s, it wasn't at all clear that you could even ask that sort of sacrifice of, of people and that organ transplantation seemed like a very experimental and even a very invasive and frightening technology that was spoken of in the same breath as uh, human cloning or genetic engineering or stem cell research or euthanasia and so on. Uh, the Pope gave a speech in 1978 that did just that, that listed organ transplantation along with those kind of medical therapies. We don't think that way anymore. And the reason that we don't is because the organizations and institutions responsible for the supply of organs in the United States, for example, the organ procurement organizations, put a tremendous amount of work into constructing what you might call a cultural account of donation, a set of reasons and motivations for giving that made organ donation less like a frightening medical therapy and more like a moral obligation or a responsibility that everybody had to seriously consider. And so it wouldn't, it wouldn't seem like uh, a, an outlandish or invasive uh, sacrifice to ask of somebody, but rather uh, something that everybody ought to do. The cultural account of organ donation has proven to be tremendously successful. However, the organ donation system as a whole still faces serious difficulties. So the transplant system today faces a crisis of supply. There are far more people on waiting lists for organs than the system can provide with organs right now. And when faced with this crisis, one of the policy solutions proposed by economists has been to introduce some kind of financial incentive, some market-like system to increase the supply. We should appeal to self-interest rather than altruism or people's goodwill, the argument goes. Now, a difficulty with that point of view is that the reason we have a successful transplant system at all in the country today is partly, of course, because of the medical advances that have allowed that kind of uh, surgery to take place on a wide scale, but also because of the success of organ procurement organizations in securing a vision of what organ transplantation means. The cultural account of the gift of life has made organ transplants and organ donation more than just the exchange of goods and services between people and instead is imbued it with a kind of social meaning that gives it the moral obligation that people feel. And that's what's allowed transplantation to work uh, in this country on such a wide scale. Uh, and so what we're faced with now is a proposal to change the system that might undermine the very thing that made it work in the first place. Given these tensions, what is the likely future of the organ donation system? Will the cultural account of the gift of life give way to a more market-oriented approach? So in thinking about the future of organ transplants, uh, it's worth going beyond individual level questions of self-interest versus altruistic motivation and considering the system as a whole. Uh, advocates of a purely gift-based or, uh, or donation-based system you know, should remember that the point of a transplant system is to save people's lives through donation and not uh, to encourage them to participate in a really unusual kind of gift giving. On the other hand, Many market advocates don't do themselves any favors by pretending that gift giving is simply an archaic form of exchange that should be swept away and replaced with something more rational or sensible. 
there are many areas in social life where we see uh, gift exchange, the form of gift exchange, providing a meaningful container for self-interested, motivated action to happen. Uh, and I think that looking forward, a successful and expanded transplant system is going to be one that finds ways to combine monetary incentives with the social meaning that gift exchange can give, rather than unequivocally choosing one form over the other.